NHL Power Week. Chuck of the Phoenix Coyotes. Power Week is coming up next. This week on Power Week, we'll look at Kachuk's Coyotes who are flying high in streaks and deeks. And in our usual monthly treat, we'll look at December's top 10 plays. Let's get right to Western Conference streaks and deeks featuring some of the NHL's hottest teams. First up, Chicago with a five-game unbeaten streak. Dovetsky has it. Center for the net. Pass to Celery. He scores! Joris handed it. Here's a steal now by LaRue. Sets it up. Dante goes. He scores! Derek Dante. Here's the last game of the speed. Going wide. Neiman on it. Celery pass. He scores! Dante sets it up. Zuner sweeps the shot. But it's a rebound. Against Toronto, the unbeaten streak was in jeopardy late in the third period. Here come the Hawks, and there goes Hackett to the bench. Avante tees it up. Hot man to save. Shamdo scores! And this is a one-goal game. It's 3-2. We are going to have a finish here, folks. Two and a half minutes to go. Captain Daze in the slot. Hot man to save. Bruce Parkley scores! After tying the Maple Leafs, they faced another tight struggle with Detroit. Cleared up and out of the zone. Coyotes have been preying on their opponents recently thanks to the red hot goaltending of Nikolai Hobby Bullen. But here comes Jonas Holmland to run it in. A save by Hobby Bullen. After shutting out Los Angeles, Nikolai tried to do the same to the Islanders. Breakaway for Tom Chesky. Hobby Bullen the save. Hobby Bullen finally did surrender a goal, but with the game tied late in the third period, it was Captain Coyote to the rescue. Fifth straight win. They extend their unbeaten streak to nine. That's the longest streak of any team in the National Hockey League this season. And Colorado tried to keep that streak going in Pittsburgh with the help of Valerie Kamensky. Good advantage for Colorado here. Lead one now, they send it up. Good shot, score. It's Kamensky second. Penguins eventually forced overtime, but the Avalanche were up to the challenge. More excitement and plays of the week, beginning with Russ Cortnall of the Kings. Here's Messier, his pass intercepted, and up the center line for speed. Russ Cortnall, he shoots, he scores! Korea, one-time pass. Solani shoots and scores! Kaimu Solani was being dragged down from behind. The Ducks are right back into this one. Ozovic goes behind the net, centers it in front. Loose puck, look out, a backhand shot, score! It's Joel Sackey, he found that puck. Volpe of Detroit has the top spot all to himself. Detroit changing behind the way. Volpe and Volpe. Volpe. Score! Volpe. What a play. That is a highlight real goal right there. Volpe and the Red Wings trail Dallas by five points in the Central Division race. Over in the Pacific Division, Colorado has opened up a commanding 16-point lead over the Kings. In the news this week, big trades. I was nervous right uh, 
right uh, this morning, you know, uh, pre-game skate. Uh, I was very nervous, but, uh, you know, that's my job. I have to play hockey, and I just concentrate about hockey. The Edmonton Oilers acquired defenseman Roman Hammerlick and prospect Paul Comrie in exchange for defenseman Brian Marchman. It was a little bit of a surprise to me, but uh, I'm looking forward to the new challenge. Uh, different division, different atmosphere. Also included in the trade, center Steve Kelly and Jason Monsignor. Later in the week, Edmonton was involved in another trade featuring some pretty big names. The Oilers acquired forwards Bill Guerin and Valerie Zelopukin in exchange for 23-year-old forward Jason Arnott and defenseman Brian Muir. The Vancouver Canucks and Carolina Hurricanes were also involved in some wheeling and dealing this week. As the Canucks acquired veteran goaltender Sean Burke, forward Jeff Sanderson, and defenseman Noriko Ciccone from the Hurricanes. In exchange, Carolina received goaltender Kirk McLean and forward Martin Jelena. In a separate trade, the Hurricanes sent veteran defenseman Jeff Brown to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a future draft choice. Turning to injury news, Flyers forward Baklov Prospel suffered a broken leg. He will be out indefinitely. The Vancouver Canucks will lose Dana Merzen for the remainder of the season. The defenseman suffered a knee injury. And Penguin center Martin Strockel will miss four to six weeks due to a broken foot. Due to his outstanding play recently, Buffalo Sabres goaltender Dominic Hasek received Player of the Month honors for December. Hasek posted a 7-5-1 record and had six shutouts tying an NHL modern day record. Let's take a look at the best of the Eastern Conference and streaks and deeks. This week, the Philadelphia Flyers paid a visit to Ottawa, a city where the Flyers haven't lost in nearly three years. John McClair continued his scoring ways and notched his 32nd goal of the season. Pat Falloon scored his fifth of the year breakaway style. The Flyers' 7-2 win marked their third victory in the last four games, while Flyers captain Eric Lindros notched his second straight four-point game. Bruins goaltender Byron Defoe isn't allowing many points as of late. After a scoreless tie with Ottawa, Defoe continued his stingy play by shutting out the San Jose Sharks. Byron Defoe has done it. Five shutouts this season. Back-to-back -back jobs for Defoe as well. Most by a Bruins goaltender since 1982-83. Not to be outdone, the Dominator lived up to his nickname in the month of December. Comes around behind him. Let's check out some dramatic finishes. Got here, Animal, what race with Trinka, moves it, he shoots it, scores! Animal sneaking in on Guy Hebert with 31.4 seconds remaining. Animal to Florida where the Panthers and Devils battled in overtime. Pass cut back to Whitney, feeds it on into Shepard, Shepard around in front, they can't get home, another shot, score! Second of the game and the winner. The great one, Wayne Gretzky, provided some heroics of his own. Tries to go for it. Pumps it out to Gretzky. Once he's there, Gretzky cuts in. Gretzky shoots and scores. Oh, baby. Wow, what a play. Get such to read the play. Jump in. He beat he Sets up the two on one. And Gretzky looked. Went right around Johansson and then fired it back against the grain. Gretzky showing some greatness on that play. Oh, baby, what a comeback. Time for the plays of the week. Florida's Ray Whitney perfects the snapshot against the Lightning. Two on one. Henry is over. Walking in. Shot scores. Ray Whitney. It's six goals in six games for this white one. Montreal's Martin Ruzinski sets up teammate Vincent Danfoos. And away goes Ruzinski. Danfoos loose in front. since we're showing you some great passes. There's a goal by Yager right in the face off. Francis passed that puck to the team. 
What a play by Ron Francis. Francis and the Penguins are currently in second place in the Northeast, just two points behind Montreal. Over in the Atlantic Division, the Flyers maintain a one-point lead over the Devils to stay in first place. Taking a look at the scoring leaders, Peter Forsberg still leads the league with 55 points. And Phoenix's Keith Kachuk rounds out the top 10 with 26 goals and 43 points. Time for our international update, and this week we focus on Russian players. What better way to start things off than with the Russian rocket himself, Vancouver's Pavel Bure. He gives the Benjamin Knight to the Pavel Bure was dancing. He was on fire, you can see. Score! Got a breakaway! Pavel Bure! Bure's among the league leaders in goals with 25. Veteran Valerie Kamensky of Colorado is without a doubt one of the most underrated offensive threats in the NHL. Forsberg and Kamensky has Colorado flying high. Folks, this may be the best line in the NHL right today. They complement each other very well. Kamensky excels with his teammates, but his one-on-one -on -one play sets him apart. Still has him. In front again. the established veteran to Chicago rookie Dmitry Novikov, who made quite a splash in his NHL debut against Vancouver. So Novikov, his first ever NHL game, should get credit for the goal. Both youth and experience is Ottawa center Alexi Yashin. Down low, Yashin looking to shut the play. Yashin tries to move it. Alexi Yashin, what a great individual effort by Yashin. He's right up the back to the floor. Yashin picks it up. Oh, Yashin goes in around Eisenbart. Back out front, Yashin, quick shot, scores! Oh, what a play by Yashin! Yashin is second among Russian players with 36 points. Still to come. We'll hit you with the best saves and body checks and don't blink. And we'll relive some of December's best moments. Score! What a wonderful goal. A dash by Barrar. Okay? Because we have a couple of NHL firsts this week. Dan Cloutier has won his NHL debut. And Derek Wilkinson gets his first National Hockey League victory in goal. With plenty of hits coming up, we jump first to the week's best saves. Big shot, Bondra. Huge glove save by Bure. They ooh and ah here at the MCI Center. What a save by Grant Bure. Chris Farrell goes to brother Peter. There he is right there. He turns and shoots it. Did it go in? No. There's the pass picked off. Here comes the table, short-handed. What a save by Guillebert! Back in, shot up. Oh, that's good, Elmo. Here's a breakaway for the Canadians. Sundin sends Johnson away on the right side. Back to Sundin. The coconut of Fise. Here's McCarty's backhand shot. It is spinning, it is flipping, it is not in. What are you in there? Back to Brook. Nice move. Looks run off to Korea, shoots, blocked into the best, takes back, and again, Bozik denied for Korea. Deflected by Kyle Walker, stop, rebound, save by Bozik with a club. Oh, baby, is that a save. Try and stay on your feet and expect the unexpected with these upcoming hits. Big hit at center ice as Chris King stepped into Greg Johnson. Let's 
wrap things up with a tribute to the man who dominated December. that made us gasp and cheer. Here they are in the top 10 plays for the month of December. It's clear to center a breakaway, Japan! Japan all by himself, she's like Japan! Power pack with two of the best defensemen in the NHL, Scott Stevens of the New Jersey Devils and Chris Chelios of the Chicago Blackhawks going head to head. Let's pick up first period action. You believe what he's putting on? The exhibitions that's going on defensively for the Chicago Blackhawks, Jeff Hackett, red hot. Only Dominic Hoschik in the month of December has more shutouts than Jeff Hackett's three. Mike Dunham gets the nod in goal. He has not played since four games ago when he faced St. Louis in St. Louis, 4-4 four, four tie. And it's interesting to note that Martin Brodeur is not in uniform. He's been felt by the flu, and he had to leave. Peter Sidorkovich is on his way up from Albany. And in fact, Davis again gets underway. He's still not yet on the bench. Well, that'll be an interesting scenario if anything should happen to Mike Dunham here early in those contests. We're underway. First of just two meetings between these clubs. New Jersey, of course. Hey! Leading the Eastern Conference, best winning percentage of the National Hockey League, and Chicago trying to solidify position. As Craig Hartsburg's been talking about that leading into the Olympic break. Here comes Namakasa, we talked about it at the top of the show. He's out there with Jammed off and Amante, so the youngster is 46. Moving right to the top line. Here is Jammed off, a wraparound and a save by Dunham, so he is tapped away off the bat and answers the call as Ralston. Tried to flip it ahead of Steve Thomas and ends up in the seats out of play. Good bit of intensity right off the bat. And as we mentioned before, that Tony Amani's line is the big line. That's the go-to line, and that's the line the New Jersey Devils are going to be focusing on in terms of defensive play. Gaze sends it ahead for James Black. He is checked to the neutral zone where the Devils make it so difficult. 
for the opposition to get anything going. Red Johnson off the stick of Dante. Back the other way. Gilmore, lead pass. A point away coming here. Elias in on Hackett with a face. Oh, oh, oh. Hackett with great patience. Stopped it with a left pad. Wow. You said it too, Dave. You know, you have to be so patient against the New Jersey Devils. This was a turnover in the neutral zone, and Elias makes a really nifty move to go to the backhand. That was right off the toe of Jeff Hackett. Watch Elias the way he takes it on the forehand here, trying to fool the goaltender, bring it to the backhand. That's a good move. And he ran out of real estate. Just ran out a little bit of room there. Good save by Hackett with the toe. Just stretching. I mean, I hurt my groin just watching that sucker go off the toe of his blade. Overall, they are one of the better power plays in the league. It's just under 20% second in the NHL. Here comes Gilmore. Hands it off. Andrew Chuck drives the check. Goal! Doug Gilmore game in the zone. He takes the puck across his own part of center ice. He squanders through the neutral zone, gains the blue line quite easily. C93 in the white right here. And you slow it down here, piece of cake. Andrew Chuck just gains the zone. Now it goes off the blade of the stick of Chris Chelios. And because of that, it had a little bit of dip to it. Originally, it looks like it's going to be in the air. Comes up, dips, whatever. Bang, right over the stick. And the right pad of goaltender Jeff Hackett his 509th career goals, and that's why he's in the top six all-time left-wingers in the history of the National Hockey League in goals scored. Chris Chelio rolls it back in opposite direction in his own zone. That allowed Weimers to get there and clear it to center ice. Davinsky trying to get to it. Davinsky has it. Right center going for the net. Pass for center. He's in. He scores! Short-handed goal for Brent center of the hockey game. What an outstanding read by Steve Dubinsky who not only outbattled a New Jersey Devil player, Niedermeyer, in the neutral zone. Oh, I should say Bodger right here, excuse me. But there on the right-hand side, that's Dubinsky, and he feeds it over perfectly. Might have got a break there. Looked like one off the glove of Bodger. Keep your eye on the glove right there. It knocks it down and ahead, and watch the way Sutter goes across the grain to the far side, off the post and in. That's a terrific play. Sutter's shorthanded goal ties it at one as we move to second period action. James Black gets to it for the Hawks, looking out in front. Goes back to the right point. Chelio whips it across. Here's Tommy, delivers the shot to the net. And Dunneman come out to cut down the angle. Cleared all the way to center ice, and that's skipped by Chelio. Hacking out the lead up there now for Connie. Connie and Chelio, who will be teammates on Team USA in the upcoming Olympics in Nagano. Harry Suter of this Hawk defense also will play for Team USA. As will Tony Amante up front. Alexei Zhemnov and Sergei Krivokrasov will represent Russia off the Chicago roster. Here's a steal now by LaRue. Sets it up. Dante with a chance. He scores! Eric Dante. Credit the work of LaRue in the corner as well. And it's a 2-1 Chicago lead. That is some great work down low by LaRue, who won the battle in the corner. And boy, the Devils are a tough team to win battles like that. They don't often lose them. I tell you what, Eric Dazay's got one of the quickest sticks around. For such a big man, he plants himself, and how quickly he releases the puck. Right here, he's in the slot, 55, and bang, he gets it, and he lets her rip. And it beats Dunham, who might be screened on the play. Oh, what a play by LaRue as he's fallen down. He, not sure what he tripped on, lost his balance, but he put it perfectly. Right out in front to Eric Daze and Daze. 13th goal of the year, a big one with the Blackhawks ahead, 2-1. Danikov now with it, drops it off for Jamnoff. Jamnoff in traffic, tried to drop it back to Abante, scored it off his stick, back from the shorthanded double. Gilmore with Andrew Tuck. Gilmore decides nothing there on the attack. Look at that. That's what Montreal Canadiens stuck there. Oh, they nearly passed it up and gave up a scoring chance. Look at Andrew Chuck take advantage of that long reach. Yeah, that's vintage old Canadian stuff. There's nothing there at the blue line. And circles back in a shorthanded situation. That's a smart move by Gilmore. Here is Chelios right point. Canceled off down for Johnson. Back to the line. Chelios keeps it up with a drive just wide. But down they dump it in for score! James Black right at the top of the crease drives it home. And the Blackhawks have stunned this big 
New Jersey crowd with three unanswered goals after the Devils had gotten on the board first in the first period. Some good hard work, good puck movement. Chelios lets her fly, it goes wide, but keep your eye on 38 in front of the net. He's not even touched by anybody there. And the Blackhawks have been able to put a presence in front of the net. Black's right here, and Dean doesn't fully take him out. Black's goal gives the Hawks a two-goal lead. Back with more in a moment. Welcome back as we rejoin the second period with Chicago leading 3-1. to one. Okay. Nearly lost it. Lays it off the boards, and it'll be gathered in by Dean. Dean sends it across center ice for Peterson. Now for McKay, hit shot, hit a leg. That is Amante. Starting back. Four skaters aside. Here's Amante with the speed going wide on Steve. And Amante, center, pass, center, scores! The speed of Amante and Gary Suter reading the play, jumping in. And the Blackhawks with a 4-1 to one lead. The Blackhawks going into this game had the second fewest amount of goals from defensemen in the National Hockey League next to only the Buffalo Sabres and their defense has become involved. That's Amani with speed on the outside. Keep your eye on the right side of your screen. 20 red, Gary Suter, he sneaks in from the point and one quick shot now and again, lack of defensive coverage from the New Jersey Devils, something we don't see often, collapsing down low, not looking around. Their heads certainly weren't on the old proverbial swivel right there. And Gary Suter sneaks in and fires it low, his sixth goal of the year. Well, we've done a couple of games in Chicago, and we've not seen a, the Blackhawk team with this much jump in their skates. I mean, guys are up on their toes and dancing. They want the puck. They want to make something happen. As you were pointing out, initiating and not retaliating. And that's part, of, part and parcel, too, of going back to old Blackhawk hockey, and that's two four checkers in. They try to one, two, two. They try to be more passive. It just doesn't work for them. Dase sets it up. Suter sweeps the shot of the net. Save rebound. Dase scores! 5-1 Chicago. Solid puck movement in the offensive zone. The Devils are just standing still, and the Blackhawks are putting on a bit of a clinic here offensively. Two Devils collide on the left side. Daze spin around backhand pass. Gary Suter just plays it at the net. Simple hockey here. Rebound goes right here. I mean, for Mike Dunham, the last thing I'm sure he's expecting is to be a, a red jersey right there with two of his Devils right beside him. Daze's second goal has Chicago ahead 5-1 as we move ahead to the third period. Great, and look who's in goal. Peter Sidorkovich, this is significant for a lot of reasons. In case you joined us late, Martin Brodeur, sick, not even dressed to back up Mike Dunham, who starts, and now Mike Dunham is on the bench. But Peter Sidorkovich didn't get here until after the game had started, driving down from Albany. First time Peter Sidorkovich, Darren, has played in a National Hockey League game since the 93-94 season with New Jersey. He has played with the Hartford Whalers, with Ottawa, and New Jersey in his NHL career. So it's got to be a, a big thrill, even though this is a very tough circumstance. Well, he's a very even-keeled individual, so if you're going to put a guy in this position, Peter Sidorkovich would be a good person for that. Now Sidorkovich right away getting tested. And it's up to center ice for Watson, who fires it in wide and hack it. Here comes Steve Thomas. Thomas sends it across the Blackhawks zone. Shot from the line. Save Hackett. Rebound is stopped by Hackett as well. So he stops the drive from Stevens and then the rebound by Ralston. Well, the New Jersey Devils were guilty in that second period of getting away from their game. And th their game is to put some pressure on the, uh, on the opposition. Turnovers with speed, and it didn't happen. Now they're trying to get back to shooting some pucks on net. Did that sucker dip too from Stevens? Yeah, Mike, good. Absolutely. Elios, the captain of the Blackhawks. Sends it ahead. Navikov settling that puck down. Hands it off to Suter. Snaps it back to Dorkovich. Comes it along to the corner. Yeah, not back to the line. Telio. For Navikov. Bouncing puck over the line. Going down. Amante digs it out of there. Hands it to Telio. Rips the shot. Saves it over the three. Bounce for Jamnoff. Scores! Jamnoff backhands it home. It'll be a power play goal. So just the third time this year that the Chicago Blackhawks have had more than one power play goal in a game. And they lead now six to one. Just on fire with their, their confidence moving the puck on the outside. And, and the key I have found really is their D to D. The decision making from Chelios and Suter has been crisp and clean. And there was a little contact right there. Nabokov makes the play. After the shot is stopped, 
right here. You see Nabokov's there. Sidorkovic is outside of his crease. I mean, all Nabokov's doing, he's looking for the loose puck. Sidorkovic is out a little bit right here. And Nabokov just jars him a little bit, just enough. And then Jamnov, who's had a real strong game both ends of the ice, scores his sixth goal of the season on the power play. Roger hands it off now for Stevens. The head look out. Weimer stepped right into Carpenter with his head down. Right here at the blue line. Whoa. And that's a good hit. I mean, that is a, that's a good hit because Bobby Carpenter's head was down. And there was Weiner. That was a good hit. Here was Dean trying to rush it back in. He's outside with it. Rolls it in front. Hit score! Peterson! We'll get a reaction from the remaining Devils fans here as he makes it 6-2. to two. Well, that's a good play by Dean. He carried the puck and took it, making a play. And Peterson was busting in. Peterson's tried to become involved in this hockey game in, in different areas, but give Dean some credit for carrying the puck in. And then on the left side, I don't know how we saw him. I mean, I don't think that was a blind pass. I mean, he good peripheral vision, or he threw it out there blindly, but it was perfect. I mean, it, it couldn't it couldn't get any better than that pass right there. Watch the blade of the stick. It's on the ice from Peterson, and that's the key there. Yeah. Your stick's up around your waist, boy. Have a hard time redirecting into the net, but Dennis Peterson scored his eighth goal of the season. We mentioned it before, how many guys at the end of the year will become restricted free agents. Dennis Peterson is another one of those players, if I'm not mistaken. Well, 6'2", 200 pounds, not afraid to mix it up and, and score some goals. Dennis Peterson would be a guy that would get some attention. Here is Cummins up the right side. Cummins winds up, drives the shot, Sure, able to block it into the seats out of play. Hartsburg has this team jumping right now. The pregame skates, full of energy, but they're full of control. Well, this is a significant win right here for the Chicago Blackhawks, not only because they did it on the road, but they did it there in scoring goals and, and shutting the Devils down as well. Chicago remains unbeaten in New Jersey since 1990 with a 6-2 win. It's time for more power pack action as the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and high-flying captain Paul Correa travel to Washington to take on former coach Ron Wilson and the Capitals. Let's get right to the action. Just about six minutes gone in the opening period. We should point out they're having difficulty with the shot clock here at the MCI Center. So unofficially right now we have the shots at five to two in favor of Anaheim as the puck is sent back along the far board. Boy, what a run Jeff Nielsen just took at Phil Housley. This is a great start for Anaheim in that they are the team that is initiating most of the contact early on. Adam Oates in traffic. Tries to send back the other way, but the pass intended for Todd Krieger was dragged down out to center ice. Paul Correa hooked down the play and taken off the puck by Richard Zednick as the Capitals again will take over at center ice. Zednick one on three. Driven to the far boards by Ruslan Soleil. He'll get support there from defensive mate Pavel Trinka. Solani motoring with Korea, who's dumped in behind the play. Delayed penalty coming up here. Trinka looks, he shoots, he's gone! The mighty Ducks created traffic out front of Olaf Kolzig. Well, the goalkeeper Kolzig is irate because somebody interfered with him, but it was his own player. There's the hook on Korea. Delayed penalty was being called. Trinka allowed to move right into the slot. Look at Mike Eagles in behind his own netminder, Steve Ruchin, clearly well in front of the goal crease, not interfering with Kolzig. So Pavel Trinka comes up big, and I tell you, what a start it's been for Trinka. Of the 24 players on the roster, 11 of those 24 had to learn the English language while coming over to this country. Well, I, and I think that Wilson had the luxury in that most of those players are, are now have been over here for several years and they do speak English fairly well. It's a much different story when you get young players, especially from the Soviet bloc countries, that first come over to North America. It, people just can't relate to the type of change that they have to go through in just living their everyday lives that ends up being a major distraction for them when they do get to the hockey rink and try to play. He also had another interesting observation. He wants to institute a day each month where one player from another country will teach everybody else on the club five, at least five words 
in his native language. So he says, whether they're good words or bad words, I'd like somebody to know something about everybody else. And I'm betting most of them are bad words. <laughs> Somehow I have a tough time seeing Dale Hunter sitting down in the locker room while someone teaches him a couple of words and checks. Said back in deep. Carpa off the glass. Back through center ice it comes. Brendan Witt giving chase. Sends a roving pick on Joe Sacco. Kelly Johansson goes back to touch. And again, we get a whistle and an icing call against the Ducks. 32 and a half seconds remaining in the opening period. It's a good look again at Brendan Witt. You know, Witt missed a pile of games early on in this season with a shoulder injury. And it's the other thing that the Capitals have really suffered from this year, and that is more man games lost to injury than any other team in the league. They're right up there with the Phoenix Coyotes. Both of those teams seem to be light years ahead of everyone else. And probably the biggest reason why is that they had to play so many of their early games away from the MCI Center. Of course, they were waiting for this building to get finished. Playing a lot of games on the road, and after a while, that travel just knocks the heck out of you. And that's after losing a team record 361 games to injury a season ago. So they are well ahead of that pace. And by the, by the way, Brian, believe it or not, at the end of this game, we will have officially completed one half of this regular season. Has that flown by or what? It's flying by. And so many times we've looked at the standings in the Western Conference. Things are so tight from teams number 5 through 13 that every game is one of those proverbial four-point games because everyone's watching and what everyone else is doing in the standings. And I got to wonder, now that the Edmonton Oilers have gone out and made the first deal following the postseason, if we're not going to see a few more trades in the next little while. And fewer trades this season made at this point in the year than in the preceding five or six seasons by a long shot. Two on one, quickly developing in over the line, backhand beat out front shot by Kanawalchuk and a big save by Guy Bear. Capitals with one of their finest opportunities of the period to close it out. Thanks to Bear, the Mighty Ducks led by a goal after 20 minutes. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to second period action with the Mighty Ducks leading by a goal. Just about three minutes gone in the second period of play. One nothing hockey game. Chris Matson calling the action alongside Brian Hayward at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Housley's left wing feed rolls off the tape of Mike Eagles. At the blue line of the Capitals. Ruchin looks for an option. Korea shoots, blocked at the defense, takes back, and again! He had a wide open upper half of the net. Well, that's the size of Olaf Polzig. The only reason that Paul Correa has not expanded the Mighty Duck lead. What a save by the Washington goaltender. Dmitry Miranov's left wing feed connects with Ted Drury in over the line, and his wrist shot caught the base of the net. Peter Bonjo will send to the left wing boards, and Mark Jansen will step up for Anaheim. Pronger with it. Top of the circle moves, and he shoots. Blocked out high. Jansen tried to corral the rebound. And along the near board, good finishing check there by Pronger. It's a one-time shot taken by Jansen. Solves Olaf Golzig. And Mark Jansen picks up his first point in the last 13 games. And the mighty Ducks of Anaheim extend their lead to 2-0. Ducks have outshot the Capitals 14-12. They lead in the hockey game 2-0. Mark Jansen picking up his second of the year from Drury and Pronger at 6.50 of the second period. Adam Oates out of the corner. Along the far board. Tries to spin away from a check. Deals down low on the back end. They shoot. They score. Position just off the near post was Andrew Brunette. He took the perfect feed and Guillain Bear had already committed. Capitals on the power play. This is a great play by Todd Krieger, who's going to walk out of the corner, draw the defenseman over to him, and then slide a perfect backhand pass over to Burnett. 
Watch the play here. Krieger goes to the backhand, finds Burnett. Paul Correa can't get into the passing lane quickly enough. And Burnett does a good job of keeping the feet out of the crease and sweeping this one into the wide open goal. But really, the play was made by Krieger. Watch Krieger draw Miranoff towards him, then slide it across to Burnett. 4.15 to go in the second period. Along with our director, Mark Victorio, and our producer, Tim Davis, along with associate producer, Aaron Teets, and our graphics coordinator, Rick Lee, Chris Matson, and Brian Hayward, calling the action here from the MCI Center in Washington. Out of the corner, Ruchin. Backhand feed, Korea. Nice touch to J.J. Daigneault. And that'll do it for this line. Wholesale player changes for Pierre Paget. Miranoff, a peek over the shoulder. Nobody even close. Stronger along the near boards. He'll send ahead. Capitals were trying to complete a line change. Back to the line it comes. Slap shot, Carpet. Carroll's off the board. Look at that. Almost came back inside off the heel of the right skate of Olaf Kozak. Miranoff out of his own end. Hard off the glass. Loose puck wrapped up in one of the Capitals players' uniforms. Finally, it's taken down by Joe Ricci and sent ahead. You know, one of the other things that Anaheim's defense has done a nice job of in this hockey game is making a lot more direct passes as they exit the defensive zone. Instead of just burying their heads and banging it around the boards, they're making more of the tape-to-tape -tape variety passes. It makes the wind's job an awful lot easier to make sure they get that puck out. Dmitry Miranoff with a bump and open ice, but a good follow up here as they shoot, they score. Peter Bondra picked up the puck as Tenorti was ridden out of the play, stepped up over the blue line, and beats Guillain Bear to the glove hand side. Well, I think this is one that Guillain Bear would like to have back. It's time for third period action with the teams tied at two goals apiece. We'll keep an eye on the clock for you. Seven minutes left in this game. Miranoff to the far side. Kelly Miller bumped from behind. Kicked ahead by Ruchin. Out to center right. It comes Solani with a step on the defense. He moves and he beats. He shoots and what a save by Olaf Pelton. That may be a game saver, but the Capitals are going to take a penalty. Delay call coming up here. It's touched by Kozig, and the mighty Ducks of Anaheim will move to the power play. What a save by Olaf Kozig. Tamu Solani in all alone took a terrific pass from Paul Correa. Solani just unable to finish. Let's pick it up. The key to this is the play by Ruch, and he gets it up to Correa. And look at Korea. He chips that puck in the air, and Witt makes the mistake of trying to knock it out of midair. What a save by Olaf Kolzig again. The first opportunity after the Capitals power play ends. Puck is sent into the left offensive corner. Paul Korea. Followed up there by Kelly Millen. Out of traffic, it comes. One time shot taken by Dale Hunter to flex to the far corner. Minute 35 to go in the game. Bouncing puck corralled and sent in deep by Johansson. Pablo Solani cuts over to it, tries to send it ahead. Pitching in far side, Capitals hold the zone. Washington bails out as Ruslan Soleil will send ahead, and you can watch out the icing call. 1.15 to go regulation. Anaheim 2, the Capitals 2. Here comes Jeff Nielsen flying out of the corner. Tries to lead face to the circle for Kevin Todd. Pavel Trinko will pinch and hold the line. Inside a minute to go in the game. Turnaround shot by Warren Reichel deflects into the near corner. Jeff Nielsen on a collision course with Brendan Wink in the corner. Nielsen digs free. He takes a stick up high from Sylvain Cote and still continues to battle. Capitals try to clear the zone. They'll bat it down, but not out. Reichel shot. Blocked out high. Look out here. Animals foot race with Trinka. Moves it. He shoots and scores. Well, this one will just break your heart. 
because up to that point when Warren Reichel spun around and shot the puck, it had been an outstanding shift for the Mighty Ducks. But Reichel has his shot blocked. The foot race at this point. Adam Oates sneaking in on Guy Hebert, and he just finds a small hole on the short side over top of the pad and underneath the blocker of Hebert. See that puck? Boy, that might have squeaked through the pads of the goaltender. Was not much space for Adam Oates, but with 31.4 seconds remaining, Adam Oates has given the Washington Capitals the lead, and yes, indeed, over the stick and between the pads of Aber. It's an unassisted goal for Adam Oates. It comes with 32 seconds left in the game. And Pierre Paget will take the ensuing face-off with the net to our left empty. You know, the thing that Anaheim doesn't have at this point is they don't have any timeouts remaining. Page used it actually in the second period, so the Ducks have got to get the face off in the offensive zone and figure out on the ice exactly what kind of play they're going to get set up. Solani in cramped quarters. Gives it up. Player without a stick is able to throw it past the outstretched stick of Dmitry Miranov. Good play there by Steve Kotowalcha. Nine seconds left in the game. Capitals have Anaheim hemmed inside their zone. Long shot by Sandstrom, and the Washington Capitals have defeated the mighty Ducks of Anaheim on a goal by Adam Oates late in the third. Thanks to a last-minute goal, the Capitals prevail 3-2. See you next week on Power Week. A save! What a move! Ba-boom! Don't you love it? I don't know if I can find the words to describe this play. Maybe we should just play it over and over again. Picked up now by Doug Wade. Wade up the middle! Inside, outside, inside, outside, what a play by Doug Waite.